place was called Superla Spa. It was a full-service establishment. Massage tables, salon chairs, mud baths, etc. The explosion went off a little after three. A squad car was two blocks away when the place went up, so the fire department was able to respond within four minutes. Not that it helped. The place was fully engulfed by the time they arrived. They were just lucky to keep it contained to just this building. I didn't know there was a spa down here. The building's been here since the late 70s, but it's only been a spa since 98. The gentleman in the corner there is Pete Baja. His company owns the Pearl Spa. I took his statement, but you'll want to follow up with him too. Have you two met yet? Not officially. I'm Sarah Seidel. The team speaks very highly of you. You want to take that interview? This is the CSI tutorial. You can turn it off at any time by selecting the option on the tutorial window and enable it again from the options menu. The cursor is used to both navigate and to select. Moving it to the edges of the screen will rotate the camera. When the cursor moves over something, it will change based on the action that can be taken. Hey, Pedro Baja. Baja, like Baja, California. But call me Pete. Everyone does. Well, almost everyone. You in charge of this place, Pete? I'm the CEO of Miel LLC. It's less impressive than it sounds. It's basically a holding company for a few mom-and-pop style businesses that were worth rescuing when the original owners wanted out. The company owns Super La Spa. What's left of it? We'll have to notify the claims adjuster when we've released the scene. Actually, this is kind of embarrassing, but the policy on this place has lapsed. You let the fire insurance on one of your businesses expire? It's complicated. We sent them a payment, but they said they didn't get it. Then they wanted us to pay a late fee and raise our premium. I mean, we've done business with them for years, and now they decide to penalize us over a little slip-up? I have some things I need to take care of. Here's my card. At least until the next board meeting. You can reach me at my office. This thing was on last night? We could have our ignition source. It's hard to tell what this was. Not much left of it. Judging from the charring in the inside of the oven, it was in there for long enough to catch fire. It's almost like a timed fuse. That could indicate arson, but we'll need a lot more evidence to prove it. should take samples of soot from all around this place to see if we can find traces of an accelerant. I think if we can get one more sample of soot after this one, we'll have enough. crimping along the edges of the split gas line. I'd say it was cut. So far, that's two things that point to arson. We'll need more evidence to be sure. Top 
acorn style ceiling. Hold your breath while you're taking that sample. If it's as old as it looks, it's probably got asbestos in it. We've gathered soot from all over this place. Should be enough. One mud bath contains a lot more mud than the others. It might just be the way they do it. But the one next to it is filled only up to the line on the side of the tub. That mud is baked solid. We're going to need a way to examine it inside and out, without actually breaking it up and compromising potential evidence. You know, the other day, Catherine was telling me that we have access to an industrial ultrasound device. It sounds perfect for this problem. I'll give her a call. Now we're living in the future. I'm still waiting for my flying car, but seeing through walls isn't too shabby. I have a rough idea, but remind me again how the device works. Just turn it on and point the wand at whatever you want to scan. The sound waves it emits penetrate at different speeds depending on the density of the material. And the onboard computer translates that into a picture, is that right? You got it. I don't think I need to tell you to be careful with it, but be careful with it. Does that look like a human body to you? It looks like we have a victim after all. I'll call Doc Robbins for a pickup. Cleaning her off is just the first step. This is going to take a while. I'll give you a call when I have something for you. Let's head back to the crime scene. See what else we can turn up. burned away from its frame. Drywall is usually fire resistant. Those holes could be there to let more air fan the fire and get to that wooden frame underneath. That's the third sign of possible arson we found. I'm almost convinced. Nice of Mr. Baja to give us his fingerprint like that. There's quite a bit of carbon from where it burned, but there's also wheat flour, tapioca starch, and sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. What I'm not seeing are any animal proteins. You know what? I think this is a vegan pastry of some kind, a muffin from the size of it.
The soot from the break room contains carbon, acetone, and T-butyl mercaptan. That's the odorant they use in natural gas. Acetone is sometimes used as an accelerant. We should test the rest of the soot we've collected. Lots of carbon, some acetone, and trace amounts of T-butyl mercaptan. That's the second sample of soot to contain acetone. Let's keep analyzing the soot samples we've collected. I think we're onto something. It's primarily calcium sulfate and asbestos. That explains why the ceiling didn't burn. It's mostly carbon, but there are traces of volcanic minerals and acetone. The mud at the spa is made of volcanic ash, but the acetone is an anomaly. We have acetone, a known accelerant, in samples of soot taken from every room in the spa. We've got a gas leak that looks to be the result of tampering. The drywall here has been ventilated to get around its natural fireproofing. And then there's this acetone residue over every inch of the place. Throw a muffin in the toaster oven at 450 degrees. Then just leave it in there without setting the timer. Sounds like a recipe for arson. Hey there, it's Dr. Robbins. Just wanted to let you know I've completed the autopsy on your burn victim. Hey, Doc. We got your call. All right. Let's begin. 